Hello everybody. Today I got into my lap another Sony A707. You see, it's a FX 707R. Uh, it's a very nice deck and it's come basically with the same problem. So if your Sony 707 stops playing tapes, or I will try to demonstrate you. So you see, are that uh, head is rising up however a uh, pinch roller doesn't get fully engaged let me see if you can let me try if you left direction or you see it doesn't get up and the problem i believe is the same here like uh, if you see this left and right guides yeah so the, the previous one those has been stuck I had to disassemble and oil both of them, like oil shafts, make sure that everything goes smoothly and so on, to make sure that it would be fully engaged. Uh, hopefully, like I just checked it in this deck, uh, there is still like friction mechanism which we've been fixing in the previous deck here, it still works okay. Uh, everything else from electronic side, like you see, everything working like no problem like Dolby engage like direction modes everything like to be fine so let me do this mechanical fix so I will have disassemble I would need to remove the front plate uh, to get access to the tape transport and probably will remove top cover like uh, to make sure I will have enough space and access uh, pinch rollers, I will try to uh, refurbish them. They look to be flat and nice, but uh, there is some deterioration. Uh, heads looks to be pretty good, like pretty minimum wear. So there is no any significant grooves yet. So I hope this deck will perform very nicely. Um, see you in the next part. Bye-bye. So here I continue. So I had to remove the front panel, then unclick these buttons panel with the glass. It just clicked in. Then I remove uh, four screws which are holding tape transport here and two at the bottom. Uh, then we need to remove this top panel. It has like three screws here, here, and here. And another three here from the top. And as you can see, this is a bit improved version. This resistor was absent on the previous deck I had. Uh, now we can remove this top panel. You see this has additional uh, plate, metal plate here, which uh, uh, reduces the noise from the digital part to analog piece. Let me remove it. And now we have our tape transport available, you see, now we can pull it, we can work with it, we can do everything we need to. This part is removable, like we can like pull it out, see how it's, it's done and so on. So this is a very nice deck, very, very, very sturdy build, like top of the line after reverse deck from 1984. So let's bring it back to life. Talk to you later, bye. So, in our next steps, I just removed the door. And to do it, I just relaxed this screw to make sure that we will be able to pull this right side holder. And like, it was quite easy to remove. Make sure that you would not lost your plastic uh, sliders, which should go on these slides on each side uh, and door itself is a combination like of the, like this piston couple metal parts springs and so on which help you to stabilize etc okay let's continue uh, so what I realized here yeah, it's it was true you see I even cannot move it by hand so usually it should be quite flexible and move by hands easily 
both of these uh, guides but uh, this is not the case this is what happened with the older deck and that was i would need to uh, like disassemble oil and assemble back on this deck so these two guides uh, on the shafts they are just stuck together and don't allow to move everything freely and that was the reason you see uh, that this uh, head rotation plastic piece or uh, it's stuck with this part and like it's even cannot uh, rotate head fully and this was the case on the previous deck so it just was like uh, pushing uh, to this piece and like head was like rotated not uh, to the proper position so now it's time like to oil everything like to assemble and then assemble back and I hope it will work pretty fine we'll see okay here I am again so I removed the guide itself so to remove it you need to unscrew this nut then properly pull out all parts and we will have this stuck piece you see i cannot like turn it it barely can be turned that that's what's the problem and that's why it uh, doesn't work properly this mechanism so that's what i will do i will slightly rotate it back and forth unless it's get released remove it clean it up oiled and put it back on and then assemble the guide back and then i will repeat this with the second guide so that's how to fix this dex well to remove this guide i also had to remove pinch roller because uh, it did disallow like to uh, pull this guide up so that's how we can disassemble it just a little bit more detail so you don't get confused then I, I just clean it everything up and I will use this lubricant uh, it's for coffee machines uh, it's don't dry lubricant and it's very very good quality it's a bit expensive but it's available on Amazon uh, and that's where I will like lubricate everything and put everything back to make sure that it will move freely okay here goes next piece so i had to clean up everything on this shaft and oil it properly i had to oil uh, the shaft for the pinch roller because it has brass bearings to make sure that it will roll freely and now as you see this part is playing very nicely together so it moves quite easily and now i will assemble back the, the guide itself see you soon okay i believe you will enjoy today's video because it's it's quite detailed on what i'm doing usually so you see now i assembled this and it goes moves freely and in a parallel to the head so you see this guide is goes very straight very easily no any issues and if you will try to do the same with the right guide oops it's stuck you see so that's now i will be doing repeating the same procedure with the right guide to make sure it will be able to move the same free as here that's what it was working when it was new and that's what we're trying to achieve now all together uh, see you soon so and here we are uh, i just assembled the right piece so if you may see it goes freely back and forth and currently we have a rotated head so it will be direction from left to right and if you see it goes right pinch roller and left guide to make sure that tape will travel properly right and now like to be able like to change direction we need to push on the magnet here 
and then rotate our cup stance and you see head change direction and now when we will push forward you see left pitch roller will engage and right guide will go up to guide the tape and left guide is uh, lower it so that's built like to make sure that only two guides like one on the head and other on the side will be guiding the tape not three but two that was a design made by sony in 1984 so i believe i assembled so next step would be to make sure the tape pass is uh, correct and i will use uh, gauge so let me prepare and i will make a video for you how to properly tune it up so here i just installed gauge in place of the tape and we are measuring how well our head is set up or i believe head is a little bit high you see yes it jumps a little bit high so that's where we would need to lower the head a little bit and with this guide which is currently engages as the high one uh, it's a little bit low so what we will be adjusting we will be adjusting position of the guide using this screw and when we adjust it properly we will seal it so it would not turn together with the engagement of the tape transport okay let's see if it fits not yet oh now it's too high you see this bumps down there so we need to lower it a bit Okay, let me adjust it so you, you understand the idea, like just I have two hands, I need another one. So we're measuring that uh, our guide is properly can fit in all three guides here. And adjust height to make sure that tape will go straight. I will return back soon. Okay, here just I adjusted the guide. So we'll see, it gets to when tape head is engaged let me let me like change my grip head is engaged it goes easily through same with the guide it goes easily through you see it right tape here tape will get here tape will get here nice now i will change reverse direction and make sure that the second guide is adjusted the same way okay fine now i did the same for the opposite direction so guide goes freely in into uh, not like height so measurement is goes freely into guide here into guide here so that's now passes set i will seal these both screws here and here and then we will assemble everything back and we'll set up a tune azimuth Okay, you may see I just sealed these nuts with a nail polish. It needs a little bit of time to dry up, but it will hold well. Okay, and now before assembling everything together, we will do a quick run check to make sure that everything we did so far works. So I will engage switch to tape transfer. We'll think that tape is in there. Uh, I believe I need to use the right switch. Okay, let me see how I may make it with two hands and not three. Oh, 
Okay, so you see, left run works. Now let's try to see with the right. You see, and right works. So it looks like we fixed it. I will assemble now, and we will go from there. Okay, and now we are checking tape pass. And I see that for left to right direction, it works fine. You see that the tape goes smoothly, no any problems. But when I switch to the left side, I see a little bit of curl here on the head guide. This means that we need a little bit lower than the right one. Despite I tune it properly by using gauge, it looks like this uh, head itself sits a little bit lower. So that's where we need a little bit lower the right guide to make sure that uh, it will work properly. And now one more test after everything has been adjusted. So you see uh, right direction, moving smoothly left direction no more curls right direction left so this means the tape pass has been set up properly because if tape will curl on one of the guides this may mean that it may not properly uh, attach to the head and that's where it will be lost on the frequencies now the next step would be to set up azimuth to make sure that our we will listen and record tape to this all frequency range okay i just set up speed using a speed measurement cassette and now we are switching to the azimuth i didn't touch anything yet so it's been screwed up while i was tuning let's work all together Let's see how it will perform. Okay, you see the looks like very very bad azimuth right now because tape has been significantly screwed up. Let's find the biggest position. You see, that's where we need to go and find the, the large point, largest. And here our azimuth we are setting up on 6300 yards. And this was initial azimuth set. Uh, it goes as minus 10 decibel. So the deck shows it properly. Azimuth more or less okay. Uh, let's scroll forward to the next frequency and try to set it up better and more precise because we use um, more high frequency we are using the more precise azimuth would be so this would be 8 kilohertz frequency minus 20 decibel minus 20 here minus 20 there and you see it's a little bit off just i i just touched it a little bit now it's more precise can make it better visible Like that, I believe. And now we see that it's almost there. Okay, now it gets to the next frequency on my tape. Okay, this is 10 kilohertz minus 10 decibel. Let's adjust it a little bit more. Okay, so probably it's the maximum point. Like let's stop run over again see that it stabilized in the point okay. a little bit can adjust okay now stabilized I believe it's good for this frequency let's go forward
contains 12.5 kilohertz. Still does well. You can switch to the XY mod. So angle is broker. Stability is not the same as from the three head high end decks because it's a single capstan deck. Non double capstan. But angle is the broker. And levels are zero, so minus 10 decibel. So everything is good. 12.5 kilohertz. I like it. Let's go to 15 kilohertz. So okay, and it's 15 kilohertz. And phase properly set. Levels are good, minus 20, as it should be. So the heads are in very good shape and deck it should work very well so next step I will record music and I will adjust like not music I will record tones and adjust it like to make sure that uh, we have properly set all levels and bias and recording would be smooth and that's almost it I believe today I will be able to complete work with this deck I like how it performs after everything has been oiled, it works pretty smoothly. 15 kilohertz azimuth looks pretty good. Levels are there. Very nice deck and very good heads. Okay, as this is the final part for this video, I just like uh, tune it up everything and I'm ready to assemble. I just recorded Scorpions, it's playing pretty nice. Uh, multiple compositions like uh, everything is good so the main reason of failure as you observed yourself was the stock grease which dried and like uh, glued parts together as soon as we clean it up and like uh, properly oiled or lubricated and uh, assembled and tune it everything back again this deck is live, it plays nice, records nice, I'm happy, I hope you will be happy with this deck either. Thank you and have a good day.